Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Aberdeen Harbour, on the northeast coast of Scotland. One of Britain's oldest businesses. It's just like a conveyor belt, you can it just never stops. <laughs> and one of Europe's most modern ports. You've got clears to sail now. This is a glimpse into a hidden world. On our way, he's under the bell now. Of the men and women who keep the harbour running. It's what you would call a typical woman. I'm a poor, defenceless female, so watch it. 24 hours a day, things change like... It's getting on for a force 10 now. Hang fire on that bell. This is just madness. 365 days a year. Goodbye, crew world! God, just with the Jimmy! How are you, my friend? It has been my yeah. pleasure. The Harbour. <laughs> UAL has a fleet of four cargo vessels which sail between Europe and West Africa. They all carry freight which services the emerging oil industries in countries like Angola and Nigeria. And this particular ship has come to pick up essential supplies and equipment before making the six week round trip once again. Peter Chernyakovich is the superintendent at Sea Cargo, servicing the UAL vessels. My role is to ensure that all the cargo is correct. So you're going to load at the same time? It all goes on board. We will aim for a finish tonight, but uh, whether or not we succeed, I don't know. The plan is to load as quickly and as safely as possible, so the ship can make an early tide tomorrow but they hit a problem even before they start. There's not a lot happening now. <laughs> We're just waiting for the hatches to be open, so. Until they are, the men can't load or unload. All right, well, we can't get going until they get the hatches on. Shifted, so it'll be another half an hour or so. A ship like this costs tens of thousands of dollars a day to run. And it isn't making money while it's sitting in port. That's about it for now, then, until we start moving about. Two hours later than scheduled, the hatches finally open. Nine containers, nine to fit containers, come off first with frame. OK. And then we'll put all one in this crane and put in a Christmas tree. And the men can start work. We will discharge the cargo first. We have to do that to empty the hold to ensure that we've got room to load it and then we'll start loading the vessel. All of the cargo is technical equipment for the oil industry, such as drill components, stabilizers, survey equipment, chemicals and explosives. We've nearly completed the discharge. We're just about ready to load and it'll be all systems go and uh, we'll hit the ground running. Hi, Coast Guard, uh, Aberdeen Lifeboat Station. What's the uh, situation, please? There's been a call out for the lifeboat. Man in the water, side cold. OK, thank you. I'll come down to the station, phone the Coast Guard, by which time the rest of the crew will be coming down, getting their suits on, get the boat out, get on the davit, launch a boat, and head to the area. Harbour boatman Billy Dugid has been a volunteer with the RNLI for the past 15 years. Everybody's close here, you know, and even though I'm a launcher and I was opposed to part of the crew, that's age-related. And 
to the nature of my work. Mm -hmm. But I still try and keep my hand down and I would go out there at the drop of a hat in a storm. The RNLI has two boats. The smaller, an inshore boat, and an all-weather boat, which is used in most rescue situations. Very good, I'll keep the north and I'll keep the other boats to no problem. Tonight they're training, as they do twice a week. Are you ready, Billy? Put your hat, hat on. Mind your hats as well, boys. All we're going to do is we're just going to put Billy in the water and just have like a mock man overboard. It's just to give some of our crew members a chance to use the A-frame on the side, just to lift him out of the water and on the side there. We'll put him to good use, that's for sure. Right. right, OK, so I'll start going, right? right. I want to go very fast. When you're happy, right. just jump in. Goodbye, crew world. I'm leaving you today. Billy's equipped with a waterproof suit. Without it, he wouldn't survive much longer than 30 minutes. Get about between 30 and 36 call outs per year. They are really during the summer months rather than the, the winter months, so it's nice weather. Just get pulled out of the water, just using the A-frame as we would for a, a normal casualty. Maybe the only difference is because he was conscious and he's only been in for a couple of minutes. Um, we didn't use uh, the two stops to lift him out horizontally as you normally would. Lifting a casualty out horizontally prevents blood draining from the core of the body, which can be fatal. Apart from that, it was just a run in the mill, pulling somebody out of the water, nothing complicated. Yeah. So water temperature, eight, 7.9. That's balmy. Right, help yourself, we have done. Oh, right. Thank oh, you, Well done, Billy. Oh, thank you. You're welcome, you're welcome. Blood's still coursing through my veins. I'm back on board. Uh, we're heading back to dry land. Before Billy started working as a boatman, he was in the Merchant Navy for 12 years. I'll go back to sea as it was years ago. It was a wee bit more carefree than it is now. We could go ashore or have a week in our port see the world and get paid for it. But now everything's containerized. So you're in a port for one day even, not even two, sometimes one day you're out away. So that's not our life. These days, volunteering for the RNLI is as close as he gets. The heart's still there, but the mage is against me. I'm 32 this week. <laughs> The Carrick Fergus is one of the harbour's two tugs, and it's off to the bay to help bring in a cruise ship. It should take just about an hour, so it should be tied up by half past five. The Arian has no bow thrusters, which makes her tricky to manoeuvre, and it's why she needs two tugs. Now we're going to back into his stern and pass up the tow line. Once the tug's alongside, the guide rope is thrown from the Arian and tied to the tow rope. Then both ropes are pulled aboard the cruise ship. The forward tug is to essentially keep the big vessel in line with the harbour entrance. The tug at the back acts as a brake. The head, the head tug, he's actually pulling the vessel round now. 30 minutes later, they approach the Arian's berth. We're just pulling the rope in now. Alistair has been involved in the marine world since 1960, and he's no intention of giving it up. I'm actually past the tidal age, <laughs> but... Uh... Ach, I'll just keep going until such times as I feel like stopping. You 
Over at Sea Cargo, the loading continues. Just when they're beginning to make up lost time, there's another setback. And what is, are both reels here now? I'll give him a shout, uh, Graham. it's okay, no problem. The reels, drilling lines on a platform or a rig, have arrived. But the delay in starting means they're not ready to load them yet. They're sitting on a low loader that's costing money and uh, the people that are paying the money are getting uh, a little bit agitated that they've not been loaded. The joys. <laughs> For every hour the reels are stuck on the loader, it will cost the customer many hundreds of pounds. And there's nothing Peter can do except apologise. The, the real truth is, uh, Steve, I don't think you're going to get these reels on till probably about 14, 1500 this afternoon. Sorry about that, my man, but uh, there's not a lot I can do. Tell her now, bye bye, bye bye. Not happy. So far this year, 11 cruise ships have called at the harbour. Yeah, welcome on board the Arion. I am the cruise director. Hello everyone. Hello. This is our Swedish passengers. I hope you are happy on board. Yeah. Are you also happy on board? Yeah. Yeah, you see there are Swedish passengers. Yeah. Do you enjoy Scotland? Yeah, it's a strange place. It rains too much. It rains too much. <laughs> <laughs> but it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. It's an eight-day cruise, and so far the ship has called at Orkney and Invergordon. It will sail to Leith tomorrow. This is the, the swimming pool area. The passenger sits here, enjoy a drink, a beer, and also in this area is the buffet deck. Here is uh, where we serve uh, breakfast. Alexander from Sweden, our youngest passenger, six years old. This is our uh, main dining room. One of our waiters here is from Bali, and your name is, sir? Dewar. Dewar from Bali. Here we go again. Alexander, our youngest passenger. This is cabin number 12. A double cabin. All cabins has a fluffy bathrobe. It's not true. But we got, we got blah, blah, blah. blah, blah. <laughs> the main purpose why we go to Aberdeen is for a full day tour to uh, Balmoral in the D side to enjoy the Scottish uh, Highlands. The Braga Viking is on its way back to the harbour after moving an oil rig just east of Shetland. It's an anchor handler, so-called because when a rig is moved, the crew first need to pull up the anchors holding it in place. Well, as far as I know, it's meant to be getting a naming ceremony tomorrow sometime, but when, I don't know. <laughs> I'm only a boatman. <laughs> the ship's brand new. It was just finished in January. Yeah, this is the, the main cockpit for uh, driving the vessel when we are steaming out to between locations. We have uh, preparing now for tomorrow, so it's a little bit cleaning up and uh, organizing everything. So, so Eric Kalimkvist is the ship's master. It's a good crew. We know each other well. The deck is made of reinforced steel. When each anchor can weigh up to 15 tons, it needs to be able to support its weight. So this is the shackle that we use when we're connecting up for, for the anchors or, or uh, when we're towing the rig. So with these cranes, you can, you can be in a safe position when you're working the, the gear, and uh, it's also easy to lift. Even then, it still takes two, three, or even four ships like this to move a rig. Now it's a alarm going into sound off, but it's not, nothing to worry about. Yeah, you can get lost in these spaces if you don't uh, find your way out. So that's the propeller shaft going in here. There are four engines in total. When the ship is heading out to sea, it can run on just one engine, but it needs all four when it's towing a rig. 
Yeah, it's, a, it's a very complex machine. It's a lot of systems that uh, are working together. So yeah, you have to be careful what you're doing. Back at sea cargo, they're just about to start lifting the first of the heavy loads, a piece of machinery which regulates the flow of oil from a well. That's a part of a subsea tree. Uh, it weighs 37 tonnes. We've had heavier, uh, but that's one of the lighter models, and that sits uh, on the seabed. Can I borrow that ladder? You've just got to turn it a little bit to make it fit. Albeit that it's a very heavy piece of metal, it's uh, treated like a pane of glass. Four hours later than Peter had originally intended, they're finally ready to load the reels. It's a stressful time for the ship's master, Maricel Marinescu. Usually we are doing uh, heavy lifts, but only with one crane up to 80 tons. This time is a little bit more and we have to use both of them. And this just is a little bit out of usual. And there's pressure on everyone to make sure that it all runs smoothly. These cranes have an 80 ton capacity each. The reels are 83 tons. So they have to share the, the weight and uh, hence the tandem lift. Two cranes will lift it up evenly, we hope. What the boys will do now is they'll attach each end onto the, the loops on the reel. And uh, off, off we go for the tandem lift. The cranes will have to move at the same speed at the same time. This is an absolutely critical lift now. Lifting such a heavy weight could cause the ship to list, but not this time. And of course, they've got that ballast absolutely perfect because there was hardly a movement in the ship there. The crane operator's job is, is it's difficult. They have to keep that reel absolutely straight, stop it from swinging. Two of them have to work. Synchronization, otherwise, you'll get the one going down, one going up. And you don't want that. <laughs> Actually, that's just about as perfect as you can get. Absolutely. So I can cancel the Valium now, I don't need that anymore. Down, down, down. At 9 pm, the men finally finish for the evening. 12 hours on and, uh, you know, yeah. it's been good. You know, the big things are in now, so... Yeah, this uh, new experience for both of us, I yeah, think. Yeah, 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 yeah. and uh, it makes me... I'll be less nervous tomorrow with the smaller boxes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they won't make the early tide, but Peter hopes it will be ready to leave tomorrow afternoon. That's the last container down just now. The two boatmen, Alan Cowper and Norman Campbell, have worked together for 19 years. I've got to talk to you on that 10 years cruise for me. Cowper. Do you know that trust you, boys? Uh, <laughs> Alan and I, we played together as kids. We used to drink together as teenagers. And we've now ended up working together. So I've known Alan my whole life. Actually, see, I uh, met Alan. Oh, yeah. Then I gave him a wife. And the kids. Mind with the last tinted, mind with the last tinted. You're lucky you're not going to have a brilliant. Why, they just need ham. We're all fitty loons, so they say, come from the village of Foot D. Foot D, or Fitty, as it's known locally, is a village that lies at the mouth of the harbour. It was purpose built in the early 19th century to rehouse the local fishing community. Ah, oh, it was good fun. You used to have a lot of good laughs. I mean, for the size of it, you never ever went doubt of it. And you just, you found something to do every day, you know, play down the beach, play football. But of course, you had to keep going because the tide was coming in and washing your pitch away. Craig Massey, one of the other boatmen, also grew up in Fiddy. This is for Alan. 
bides here. And he's with us, they are brought up here in Fae, same as we do. Craig's father and three uncles were all born in the village, and he grew up surrounded by his extended family. This was my granny's who's here. And that's a shed. And the shed's bigger than the house. Okay, but you, you mind getting put in a bailer. Can go down the beach for a swim, coming back out covered in sun. And, and if granny just finished the clay, she would have put in a bailer or not. You know, rub down that reed soap and the scrubbing brush. Life back then was very different. The doors were never locked. So if you were short of milk, you went into an alias house, and alias was up to the castle gate. You just went into the fridge and teed out milk, or two slices of loaf or whatever you was bitten, and back in the rain house. The next day you'd say to Neil, hey Neil, just a pint of milk back, pint of milk. And you, oh, I was short of milk yesterday, come in. Oh, no bother. Oh, take my loon. Hard head. Greg, how are Hard you? Hard head, loon. Just enjoying the sun. Like Craig, Derek Robertson also grew up in Fitty. It's a great place to bide, is it? Yeah, it's super. Um, I mean, for you as kids, if you would get into trouble, you get a clap in the log. Yeah, baby, I so fuck. But you never got much wallops, Craig. No, I was a good loon. Yeah, you was a I good, good loon. I never caused any trouble in Fitty. Bit like myself. All in Cooper, he was a rogue. Uh-oh. Oh. Led me astray. Oh, Led me astray. Oh, dear. At the harbour, the crew's passengers from the Arian are returning from a soggy day trip to Balmore. Once the crew have removed the gangplank, there's a novel way of getting them back on board. Did you see how they got the boys on board? They have to put the gun away. The wee boys, they screwed the gun, we're still a bit. Oh, we have cargo net. Two of them sit in the cargo net. Right, are you ready? Spring! Fuck up your mind! It's a spring! Yeah. But there seems to be some confusion. Move the boat off. And I'll don't let anything go. You guys still made a single up? Thanks, you just hold it. Well, somebody better tell me mate doing after you, tell me to let go of him. Oh, well, you somebody's got a lack of communications. You can, the mate's telling you to let go, so you start letting go, thinking the captain's told him. And then for the pilot gets on board, the pilot says, no, no, don't let anything go, the tugs are not hooked up yet. Okay, gents, we'll leave it like this until the tugs show off. No harm done. Seagulls are getting a good feed. <laughs> With the tugboat secured, the ship's finally ready to leave. Open area, let go headlines and stern line speed. I've always fancied a cruise, I'm trying to get a wife to go in a year's time, because I'm be 50 then. I'm just going to go to her, maybe, and then no. Had you all clear off? That's it now. The following day, it's another early start at Sea Cargo. We have uh, 11 of these pipes to load. And then with two containers at the forward end of the boat. They're hoping to finish in time for a 5 p.m. departure. As the sailing time gets nearer and nearer, it really becomes very tense for everybody. But there's another drawback. The weather's deteriorating and there's no guarantee that the ship will be able to sail this evening at all. We don't know anything at the moment. Uh, the wind is uh, up at 35 knots. That's come from the captain. And the limit is really uh, round about the 20 knot mark. Nobody will take any risks, least of all uh, the, the harbour. If they say that it's too windy, it's too windy, and that's that's it until uh, the wind dies down. At 1 p.m., Peter can't put it off any longer. I'm going to make the call now, yeah. Ah, oh, good afternoon to you. Could I have VTS, please? Thanks, boss. Definitely off for tonight. Tell Alan, bye bye. Yeah, that's a blow. That's that, I'm afraid. Uh, 
a lot of hard work and uh, no lunch today and things like that to no avail. That's the way it is. The Braga Vikings' big day arrives. It's not every day uh, I'm wearing the uniform. Actually, it's the first time, so. <laughs> and preparations are well underway for its most important part. The uh, godmother of the vessel is going to throw the valve to, towards the ship's side and it's going to be crushed, hopefully. The godmother is Jeanette Wetterstrom, the company's HR director. Yeah, I will do my very best to break it. <laughs> It tends to bring unlock if the bottle is not being crushed at first throw. But as I said, we are not superstitious. So. No. <laughs> but, <laughs> but if, but if not, it's broken. We are suspicious. Yeah? No, yeah. <laughs> the ship is named after Braga, the god of poetry and music in Norse mythology. Although the ship is Danish, the company decided to hold the ceremony in Aberdeen, where most of its clients are. Must the gods of winds be with you and your crew and assure you fair winds and smooth seas wherever you sail. I hereby name you Brage Viking. the first time, but uh, if not, then three times it's OK. Yeah. The Norwegian uh, queen actually had 12 times to break uh, a bottle once, so I only needed three, so. <laughs> the following morning, the wind has gone, and the ship is finally able to sail, a day later than it should have. Uh, you okay? I'm fine, thank good, you. Good. I'm ready to go now, so we are leaving within the uh, next 20 minutes. Uh, the pilots are ready for us, the vessel is ready for departure. You take it easy. All right, you see you, myself. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Rather an expensive exercise for the, for the line, for the owners, but uh, it's just one of these things. That's shipping, I guess. I just like to see him go out. It's, uh, it's a habit that I've gotten into. When I see one of these sail, I think that's a job well done and uh, a big achievement. Good luck to them all, and we'll see them next time. This is just one of many thousands of boats that pass through the harbour. Every single day of the year. Happy New Year, my darling! The old year gone and the new one just beginning. Bring me sunshine, Bill. Bring me sunshine. You ready? Bring me laughter. 